Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our contrarian betting breakdown for uh, this Saturday's card. And we had a very, very, boy, I hate to be like this. I hate to say it was successful, um, because that's being very, very results-oriented. But we did have a couple of good underdogs win, uh, underdog wins come in, so I guess that's uh, considered successful. But again, it's more the process of how to analyze these fights that is that is 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 beneficial i mean listen if, if we make money on a week-to-week -week basis sure that's that's obviously great but i think the the most important part of this video series is to learn how to be contrarian and, and learn you know how, how to kind of resist the narrative sort of so the the idea again behind uh mma wagering is that the, the twitter space and 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 mma betting in general is really subject to a lot of groupthink. And people are so excited about figuring out one way a fight can go, or at the very most, th two fights the way can go. Uh, two fights, two ways a fight can go. Either A wins this way or B wins that way. And in a sport which is rife with chaos, that approach is very, very nasty. You know, like you end up getting a very popular type of wager which is sort of by definition you know something that's going to be overvalued so what we try to do here is you know wait as long as we can that's you know usually till the end of the week so that we can get a good idea of where the public is and once we identify what the public's main uh opinion is then we know what i don't know then we know what's overvalued and i'm not saying it's not going to come in quite honestly what people think is most likely to happen is probably most likely to happen. Um, but in, in the betting world, it's not so easy. You know, those are usually the things that you want to fade. So we have to combine number one, fading what's most popular. And of obviously we have to come up with something that at least makes some logical sense, given what we know about, about the fights. So let's go over the rules here. We have 12 fights and we're always going to be putting, putting, one bet in on every single fight on the card. And of course, that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Secondly, we're always going to be betting one unit on every fight. And of course, that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care about that either. Um, and for us, one unit is going to be exactly $180, 10 times high, good luck. The other thing is that we are going to always presume that we're going to lose the first 11 fights on the card because we're making stupid, ridiculous bets. And so we have to kind of get our money back. So we are always going to, in the main event, bet something that's going to get our money back, uh, presuming at the beginning that we're going to lose everything. So at the main event, we have we always like to have some fun and we're going to be betting on something that gets you at least 11 to one because it's a 12 fight card. We're presuming we're going to lose the first 11 and that's just what we're going to do. Um, okay. So let's just get started and let's just start with Muhammad Usman versus Thomas Peterson and sloppy heavyweight fight, which everyone kind of agrees on. And also everyone kind of agrees that Thomas Peterson is, is a little bit, uh, you know, small for the weight class. His, uh, uh, his no way he's going to be able to get Muhammad Usman down. And that's really his only path to victory here. So while this might be somewhat boring, uh, Usman is probably the side here and most people think it's probably a pass but if anything Usman's probably safe so we're just going to get ahead and, and take Thomas Peterson here uh, the only question is do we want to play him in any kind of in any kind of funny business um, probably not because it's not as if the public is saying that if Peterson wins it's going to be this way okay so let's just take Thomas Peterson plus only 102 is that for real I, that, that line is probably so awful that it probably just has to win. Thomas Peterson. We're playing Thomas Peterson actually at only plus 102. Yikes. All right, moving on. We have uh, Luana Carolina versus Lucy Pudilova. And Pudilova is, is you know, uh, she's, people are saying that she kind of got, was on the right side of a robbery in her last couple of fights. And Luana Carolina is everybody's, kind of darling now. I mean, she had, you know, she, she actually got a third round finish in her last fight. 
she was able to stuff the takedowns of Lupita Godinez. And this is the way people's brains work. If she can stuff the, the takedowns of Lupita Godinez, she can certainly stuff the takedowns of Lucy Putalova. Well, so in that case, we're going to take Lucy, Lucy Putalova. As a matter of fact, the other thing that no one's going to factor in is that, or no one's going to predict that she actually finishes inside the distance. So we're going to take that. We're going to go Putalova inside the distance, and that can't be very popular. Let's see what her price is here. Uh, winning method. Pudilova inside. Plus 500. Let's go. All right, moving on. Trey Ogden versus Loic Razdaboff. So Trey Ogden is all of a sudden everybody's hero. Uh, he is now known as the great fight IQ god. Okay, and when you when you watch all the breakdowns from this uh, this week, all over Twitter and all over everywhere about this fight, that's what you're going to see is that Ogden is good with the game plan. Okay, and he's going to kind of just just work his way around and maybe you know take over the fight late. And Loic Razabov is going to gas. So essentially, it's either Razabov early or Trey Ogden late. So those are the things that you can't bet. You can't bet Ogden by decision. And you can't bet Razdabov early. So what we can do is either go Trey Ogden early or Razdabov either late or by decision. So let's take a look at these Razdabov lines here. Uh, okay. Razdabov by decision is plus 200. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's, let's see about a particular round here. Razdabov round three is plus 1,400. Razdabov round two is plus 850. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Razdabov round two plus the 150. Plus, plus 850 for 180. Because when you're out, we're probably supposed to play him by decision though, right? Because Ogden taking over late. That's really the narrative there. Yeah, let's do that. Razdabov by decision, plus the 180. I mean, plus 200 for 180. Um, wait, where'd he go? Ross divided by decision, plus 180. I'm moving on. Miranda Maverick versus Deanne, Deanne Barbosa. Um... I really haven't seen anybody take Barbosa and that's even considering the plus 180, you know, uh, people are kind of arguing over how Mar Maverick's going to get it done, whether Barbosa is, you know, going to be able to stuff takedowns and, and Maverick might just be able to get it done on the feet, but no one's really considering the possibility that Barbosa is going to win. Okay. Um, so here are the two options. We could play Barbosa in the you know to 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 uh, just to win at plus 180 or if you want really want you could play maverick in round one because that's something that no one has been even considering so uh let's think about this maverick round one is plus 650. I don't know how she's gonna do it though. I don't think she's ever gotten anybody out of there in round one. So let 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 let's 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 not do that. Let, let's just go with uh Barbosa plus the 180. I don't no one's really pulling the trigger on that one. So we're we're gonna we're gonna presume that there's some decent value in that. All right, moving on. We have Brian Kelleher versus Cody Gibson. So Cody Gibson is coming off of like, you know, is coming off of a bunch of a uh, bunch of losses actually, and uh, yet he's still a minus two hundred favorite. And the reason why they're saying is because Brian Kelleher is washed. Um, so again, Kelleher is probably the side with respect to, um, you know which is the most unpopular side. The one thing that unfortunately you can't do, and it's going to be very, very tempting is to play Kelleher by submission, because that is one narrative that you're hearing most of the week is that Kelleher has the sick guillotine. So if you want to be a genius, you could play Kelleher by, by, uh, by guillotine or Kelleher by sub. 
So because of that, that's priced that out of out of the money for us. I'm sure that's going to be bad value. So what you could do is you could play Kelleher by decision. I don't know how anybody's going to do that. So boy, oh boy. All right, let's try it. Kelleher by decision is probably really gross. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Kelleher by decision is plus only 350. Wow. What an atrocious bet. Kelleher by decision plus 180. Let's go. John Young Lee versus Hyder Emil. Um, well, I don't know why Hyder Emil is getting so much so much heat here. I mean, he's he's nine and oh, he's done nothing wrong. And yet people are all people are just are just hating on him. You know, they're like, well, he's older, he, he's not very active. Uh, John Young Lee is just he's younger, he's faster, he's gonna get there. I don't know, man. I'm 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 down for some Emil here. So let we're gonna we're gonna take a meal only plus one sixty, considering that probably nine to one people are taking John Young Lee. The only question is whether we need to take a meal, you know, by KO. You know, uh the reason why we can't is I think that's a little bit too narrative based. In other words, people are saying that Emil, you know, is a wild man and he keeps coming. So I think the Emil inside the distance line is actually a little bit juiced. So we're just going to make the awful, awful play and just go Emil plus the 160. But we're really going to need to hit the main event because these are these are definitely some of the worst bets I think we've ever made in this in this video series. All right, uh, Duho Choi versus Bill Algio. Bill Algio is just going to put a pace on him. Uh, he's just more well-rounded. He is, you know, he could go to the wrestling if he wants. And while Duho Choi, it's nice that he was in the Korean military or whatever, Bill Algio is just going to kind of teach him the vet lesson or whatever it is. So we'll just take Duho Choi. Duho Choi just plus the 142 again nothing nothing fancy for 180 Cody Durden versus Bruno Silva all right um this has just kind of become kind of a system play uh I just do this all the time is when you have one fighter who is just guaranteed to go for the takedowns uh just to bet the other one by submission okay? Because what people forget is that when the fight is on the ground, anything can happen, okay? Yes, Cody Durden could just kind of smother him or whatever. Bruno Silva's jiu-jitsu is not bad. Um, and I think he has some submissions of his own. So I think that Bruno Silva by submission is the contrarian play here. And that's what we're going to do. So Bruno Silva by sub. We don't need to do it round one, although that would be pretty, that'd be pretty sweet. But let's just do Bruno Silva by sub plus the 400. For one evening. All right. Kurt Holaba versus Kimon Khrushchev. Um, Khrushchevsky. Holaba has been getting like all kinds of money throughout the course of the week. Um, and, and it really makes me wonder. <laughs> Uh, I, I really feel as though I'm going to be the sucker here, but I am going to go against the money, the, the money movement here and just presume that Krzyzewski has just got to have something, you know, um, this is probably the real, the real, I don't even know if it's particularly contrarian um, to go against, because uh, you look at it and say, how about only plus 110? Um, but we have to go against the big money line movement here. We just have to do it. So it's just going to be Krzyzewski and, the the question is how is he going to do it? Unfortunately, we don't have any big narrative about how that's going to happen. People are saying that maybe he'll go for some takedowns, but aside from that, not much. So we'll just lay the one thirty, and this is going to be one of those examples of just kind of like taking the favor to be contrarian. All right, moving on, we have Jun Young Park versus Brad Tavares. Jun Young Park, uh. While Brad Tavares, he's certainly, you know, he's had good takedown defense in the past. He's been pretty bad recently. And and Jun Young Park has a lot of different ways to win. He could either, you know, obviously, if he can get takedowns, that's great. But aside from that, 
probably beat him up on the feet. So, I mean, I can't imagine anybody taking Brad Tavares. So that's what we're going to do. He's only plus 136. What kind of moron is going to take Tavares at plus 136? That moron would be Eric Sheetshaber. Okay, uh, just a couple of more. So we have Steve Garcia versus Sinwoo Choi. So this is going to be a banger. This is going to be a war. You're going to have Seung Hyo Choi, who just doesn't mind, you know, taking some damage to give some. Steve Garcia throws all kinds of heat. So one thing we're certainly not doing is betting this fight to finish. Okay, there are two ways we could play this fight. We could either just play one of these dudes to win by decision or be just a little bit, you know, a little bit more circumspect here and just play the fight goes decision. And that's what we're going to do. So fight goes decision would be, where is that? To go the distance plus three fifty. Let's go. So I think we've really outdone ourselves here. You know, we, we've played 11 bets here. And it's like the worst combination because we're taking terrible sides and we're not even getting that big of a price. I mean, I don't know what we're even doing here. Well, what we're doing is, is being as contrary as possible. So let's review the terrible picks that we've made before we figure out how we're going to get all of our money back. Thomas Peterson, I mean, plus only 102. The guy's awful, right? But we're going to play him. Huda Loba against everybody's new hero. Uh, uh, Luana Carolina, who never gets finished. We'll, we'll try at plus 500. Uh, Razdabov gassing late against the great game plan guy, plus 200 by decision. Dion Barbosa, only plus 180, considering 99% of the people are picking Maverick. Got to be an idiot to do this. Kelleher, the only way he's winning is by KO or by submission. So, of course, we're going to play him by decision, plus 350. Haider Emil against uh, Jun Young Lee, uh, just plus the 160. I mean, again, that's just literally throwing money in the trash. I mean, Jung Young Lee is just faster. He's younger. I, I don't know why we're doing this. Uh, Duho Choi against Bill Algio. He's going to get taught the vet lesson here. Uh, Bill Algio with the pace, with the wrestling, with being more well-rounded and all that stuff. What are we doing? Well, we're just trying to make sure that we go 0-11, I guess. Bruno Silva by sub. Uh, why are we doing this? Cody Dern is the one that's going to be getting all the takedowns. Why are we playing Bruno Silva by sub? I guess we just want to lose. Krzyzewski. Against the, the the hipster underdog play of the week in Kalaba, we'll lay the one thirty. Oh, look at this, Brad Tavares. We even now we're only getting plus one forty against Jun Young Park, who has who would win in every which way. And then the banger of the 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 banger of the night, Steve Garcia against Sung Yu Choi. We're betting that to go to decision. Good luck for that. So we're gonna be zero eleven. So what we have to figure out is how we're gonna get twelve to one on this last fight. So we have Amanda Lemos versus. Uh, Verna Jandarova and one thing that we know for sure we know a couple of things number one is that Jandarova is going to be going for a bunch of takedowns so if she's going to be winning it's going to be either by decision or by sub okay. uh, Amanda Lemos her big advantage is going to be on the feet so if she wins it's going to either be by decision or by KO, okay? So, I think I know what I want to do here. Boy, I don't I don't think I'm going to be getting the 11 to 1, though. It sucks. Because what you're supposed to do here, you're supposed to play either Vanderova by KO, Jandero by KO, or, remember the theme from the Cody Durden fight? Or play a Lemos by the submission. But I don't think either one of them is going to get you 11 to 1. So we're going to have to find a, a, a good um a good round, I think. But let's just take a look. So let's say Vanderova, Jandarova by let's look at first of all Jandarova by what are her winning methods? Uh ooh, Lemos by sub plus 1400. That's it. Ball game. Or, oh my God, you can do either of these. Jandarova by TKO plus 1600. I think both of these are extraordinarily good plays. Jandarova could totally get there from top position. 
and Limos can totally get there in a scramble. So what we're gonna do, and we can't play them both. I mean, we can, but that's not th that's no those are not the rules. We're gonna go in a fight in the fight odds, and we're gonna see who's got more. In other words, if Jandaroba's got KOs or if Limos has subs. And that's going to determine which one we take. Let's see. All right, let's take a look at these. Well, we need Rom to make this birdie. I have this Rom. There you go, Rom. Okay, um, let's take a look. First look at Janderoba. Any KOs? Let's see. Decision, decision, decision. There you go. Oh, arm injury. Submission, submission, submission. So literally no KOs, all submissions. So it looks like it's going to be, and I know that Limos has to have a sub somewhere. There it is. Let's go. Limos by sub. Plus 1,400. Let us go. And we will put these in once we... Uh, once we uh, log off, I can't do it with Zoom running while uh, you know, DraftKings will yell, yell at me. But aside from that, we are going to be good to go. And uh, again, hopefully this is, you know, this is not as much of a lesson of who to bet this week, but how to kind of think about these types of fights. And uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.